So does your army want some knightly support? Let's talk about the best ways to add a super heavy war machine to do some heavy lifting for your army. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking knights, and I thought today we'd address a question that I've been asked absolutely loads of times for in the comments, a review of some of the best ways to add an allied knight to help support an imperial or chaos army. In the video we'll talk about the options for doing so, which rules you can access for both factions and which ones you can't get, some of the strongest rules on offer for both the imperial and the chaos knights, and some examples for knights that you could add to your army that might be some of the stronger ones available. Loads to talk about, so let's jump into it. In the new Imperial and Chaos Knight codexes, they revamped their allied rules and made their super heavy detachments work a little bit differently. Really quite a nice touch, I think, as there was a fair bit of fluff about single Imperial Knight Freeblades or Dreadblades pitching up to help another army. But if you actually wanted to pull that off, it would cost you a whole load of rules. On top of the three command points for the super heavy auxiliary detachment, It'd also break all your army wide special rules, so get rid of things like miracle dice, combat doctrines, and any faction unique secondaries that you had. Fortunately, in the new codexes, they allowed a super heavy auxiliary, free blade, or dread blade knight to be taken alongside the bulk of your forces without breaking those rules. It certainly means a lot of armies could look at these guys as new options that they could take if they wanted, potentially to help fill a battlefield role and do some heavy lifting for an army that can't really excel in that particular area. I think it is quite nice in theory, though I do perhaps feel like they're probably not going to be top tier competitive like this, just due to the amount of special rules that you still give up for the knights. In any case though, if you do want to go down the route, then perhaps the easiest way is that super heavy auxiliary detachment, run it as a free blade or a dread blade, it costs you 3 command points to add the titanic knight to your army, or 1-3 to three armagers in a squadron. This is the one that doesn't break the whole army rules, so you still get things like your combat doctrines, and unique secondary objectives. There are some trade-offs to running a super heavy auxiliary and to run a free blade or dread blade though. You don't get household traits or stratagems, just some more simplistic bonds and traditions, and in the super heavy auxiliary you do pass up quite a lot of other rules as well, as we'll go through very shortly. The other option is to field a more complete detachment of knights and to take an actual allied super heavy detachment. This one has some costs and benefits, it means that you would get household traits and stratagems and things, but it does mean that this one would break your whole army special rules, so no combat doctrines or unique secondaries, and plus if you do happen to include any titanic knights in the super heavy detachment, it will cost 6 CP, usually too much to really justify. If you want an actual super heavy detachment, then I think the plan would be to make this your main detachment, have a knight as your warlord, and get those CP refunded by the knight lance rules and take whichever army you're running alongside, and use that one as the allied one. I think perhaps it's a bit more justifiable for the armagers or war dogs. If you don't take Tanics along, then the detachment cost is only 3 CP, and it means that you could spam all of those under a given household and access the stratagems. That one might be worth it, but both sides of the army not getting any army-wide special rules is a bit of a nerf. For this video, we're going to focus on the single auxiliary support detachment, as I think that's the way that people are most likely to ally knights in. And here's just a very rough breakdown of the sections of rules from the codex that you access, and ones that you don't. I must say that placing them side by side, the chaos ones do get a couple of sections that the imperials don't get their equivalents of. And between that and some of the data sheets they have access to, I'd say that maybe a chaos dreadblade might be a little bit more of a useful ally than an imperial knight freeblade. Still though, I guess it depends on what role you're trying to use them for. Going down the imperial list, Firstly, going down the Imperial list, the three sections of buffs that they do get access to are their objective rules. The big knights count as 10 models, and the armagers do count as objectives secured and count as 5 models, and that is quite a powerful thing to add to an army. Fast moving vehicle obsec units are a bit unusual in 40k. Otherwise, they get full access to their set of stratagems, and the knightly ones tend to be fairly powerful as they're applied to really big chunky units. And the, as the free blades or dread blades, they'll also get access to their martial traditions basically like a minor household trait that amps up their damage or defence in some way. Otherwise, there's a whole load of things that you can't access within the codex, or if you do access them, then they don't really do anything. Bondsman abilities won't be relevant, as you can't have both a Titanic Knight and an Armager in the same auxiliary. You do get to declare yourself either Questor Imperialis and Mechanicus, and that does open up some options, but you don't actually get the Allegiance Oath, say the extra plus two wounds for Mechanicus, for example. You can't access warlord traits and relics, as you can't buy them in if you don't have a knightly warlord. 
The Code Chivalric is just for knights only armies, so are the knights secondaries. The Preceptor's knightly teachings won't make any difference, seeing as again you won't be able to take big knights and armagers within the same slot. You can't take the Exalted Court points cost upgrades, you need a knight lance for those and character knights. As mentioned, they can't be from noble houses, as you have to be free blades if you don't want to break army wide special rules, and you can't take the free blade lance as that has to be a knight super heavy detachment as well. Definitely some big hits there, particularly for the big knights not being able to take warlord traits and relics is pretty nasty. It does mean that if you had a knight data sheet in the knight codex, you could be getting multiple layers more special rules on the same unit warlord traits, relics, quest or allegiance, chivalric codes, and exalted court all on the same model. So in theory, if you invest a bit more, you could have 5 extra layers of buffs on your big knights, compared with the ones that you get just as an allied one. Onto the chaos side, things are maybe a little bit brighter though. Again, they lose much of the equivalent things from the Imperium. Dread abilities, traitorous ambitions, and harbingers of doom are generally all not going to apply. But a couple of their sections can be made useful. Their psychic powers can be cast if you take an abominant along, and some of them are powerful. And importantly, they can also use that favour of the gods ability. The points cost upgrade that gives you a whole slew of different powerful abilities to stack on a knight, they're almost always worth taking, so I think most allies chaos knights will have at least one of those, on top of your choice of dreadblade fell bonds. Let's focus on each of them in turn then, and we'll start with the Imperium. Basically the challenge to extract the most value out of one knight is to get the best data sheet, use the best martial tradition on it, and be prepared to use some decent stratagems. I think most people's idea of allying a knight will be one of the big titanic knights to do some heavy lifting, but I do suspect that actually the most competitive option is probably going to be three armages. As I mentioned, fast moving vehicles with objective secured that count as five models really are quite powerful, and they've got fairly decent stat lines in their own right with a nice generalist melee profile, plus an anti-tank gun on the warglaives. Pretty solid overall, and they do have access to some fairly good stratagems as well, as a lot of them cost one CP, where they cost two on the big knights. Otherwise though, if you do want something titanic in your life, I think you could make arguments for most of the data sheets. If you lack for long range anti-tank, then a Castellan with that Volcano Lance and Plasma Decimator will kind of solve that in style. I think most of the Questor Knights are usable, shame that you can't make the most out of their good bondsman abilities though. In particular, I think that the Knight Gallant is quite an interesting one, a fairly cheap melee missile that forces your opponent to have to deal with them. Perhaps good to use as a distraction Khan effect to force the enemy to take him down while the rest of your army gets to work on what it needs to do. And I think that Canis Rex is actually probably better as an allied knight than in Imperial Knight detachments, as most of his strength comes from the data sheet, and he has pretty good raw stats for 440 points. From the 412 knights, I think most of them are a bit underwhelming. The Questor Megara remains okay though. Good offensive weapons and an inball save in melee make for an all round strong choice. Out of the data sheets, I think the ones that I'd be least overwhelmed with are the Valiant, who just seems a bit overcosted, the Knight Preceptor, where you're not going to be able to make use of its teachings, and most of the Forge World ones. Then we have the martial traditions that you can put on them. I think a few of them are quite useful, but they are often going to depend on whether or not you are going to want to go Imperialis or Mechanicus. The choice does still matter a bit, as it's going to lock you out of different stratagems. If you're Imperialis, I think that Hunters of Beasts is quite a good one plus one to hit against monsters and vehicles, and plus one damage versus titanic units. If you're looking to take a knight to fill an anti-vehicle role, then this seems pretty excellent. Seems like it could be good on armager warglaives, or just something with a big decent anti-tank gun, maybe a Castellan or an Errant. Otherwise, Noble Combatant seems really interesting. This one's one of those ones where you get to make additional attacks if you don't make it to the inflict damage stage. A really powerful melee rule, though it seems to be currently waiting on an FAQ at time of recording. I think it will be fixed to only working on the strike attack of melee and not sweep attacks. If and when that one does go through, it's going to be a massive melee buff against big things. I think it'll turn out to be a top tier pick, but unfortunately needs to wait for the FAQ to clarify that. On the Mechanicus side, there's a single reroll wound or damage roll. I guess that's okay on the big knights, but seems better on the warglaives where you have the big anti-tank shots to reroll. And Blessed Arms isn't the worst either, an extra 6 inch range for a shooty knight, and your heavy stubbers get 6 shots and AP minus 1. Seems alright on an errant crusader or paladin perhaps. In general I think that the imperialist ones probably have the better martial traditions, but unfortunately I think the mechanicus ones have the better stratagems. Mechanicus can access a 1 command point 5 plus save against mortal wounds, quite important in current 40k, and they also get machine spirit resurgence to allow you to fight on full profile, another very very nice one. 
I guess you could also think about calculated targeting if you did want to gamble on some big heavy mortal wound rolls, though that could be very swingy as to whether or not it does loads or nothing. For the Imperialis, you get a Fights in Death one, one command point for Linebreaker, which is potentially very powerful, with the option to consolidate towards enemy lines and leave combat, and a weakish one called Stormstriders, which allows you to deal some mortal wounds when you move along. Kind of a tricky decision, really. It's basically either go Mechanicus for those better stratagems, or go Imperialis for the better flat buffs. Putting it together for the Imperials first, here are just a few ideas that I think are vaguely strong, and could be a good option if you do want to ally a knight. First up, we've got a knight Gallant. As I said, nice and cheap. Just throw him towards the enemy, force them to deal with him, rotate ion shields to make him extra hard to take down, and if at all possible, wreck something important in close combat, the enemy then takes him down, hopefully with squads all around him, and then use the stratagem to auto-explode, throwing out d6 mortal wounds to a bunch of units nearby. I'd be very tempted by noble combatants when it's fixed by the FAQ, but even if you don't have it, you still have a mighty damage output, you average something like 23 wounds to a toughness 8 3 plus save vehicle with that Thunderstrike gauntlet, or around 7 marines with armour of contempt if you use the sweep attack on the chainsword. The knights have a fair few helpful melee stratagems as well for a few extra mortal wounds or a bit more toughness, though he does kind of miss some of the durability increasing relics out of the codex. Next up, I do think that Canis Rex is a really interesting choice, 440 points, and he of course isn't going to miss any of the relics or things as he can't take them anyway. He does fight almost as well as a Gallant, 5 attacks hitting on 2s, often with exploding 6s against non-Imperium things. He gets a chance for mortal wounds on 6s, though he doesn't get the choice of the Chainsword or the Gauntlet here, as he only has a Gauntlet. Over the Gallant though, he's got a decent increase in shooting with that Laz Impulsor. It's perhaps not as strong as some of the other Questorus Knight variants, but seeing as you're combining it with the melee of essentially a Gallant as well, then it's still very, very powerful. And it's got a couple of other little advantages, such as a single re-roll each round, which can help you re-roll some saves for some nice durability, and so Hexer can get out when the knight is slain, giving you a very small annoying unit, maybe to screen, or try and deny some points for killing the unit. Finally, we've got three Armager Warglaives, armed with heavy stubbers for 435 points, really quite a lot of vehicle to chew through, with 36 wounds at toughness 7 and 5 plus invuls, good movement and 5 model obsec, and maybe good martial traditions might be something like Hunters of Beasts to help those melters out against hard targets, or Machine Focus for some re-rolls. I feel like they could be quite interesting if you've got quite a lot of heavy targets in your army already, maybe overwhelming anti-tank a bit in conjunction with some Astra Militar and Basil tanks, or providing some better ways to score objectives alongside some Space Marine Dreadnoughts maybe. They will miss the minus one damage from the Bondsman abilities, but they still have some nice durability stratagems, one command point for rotate ion shields, and transhuman physiology as well, and again a couple of handy ones to help them out in melee. Moving on, we come to the Chaos Knights. As mentioned already, they do have a few other things that they can build around. They can also use their psychic powers and favours of the gods, in addition to the stuff that the Imperials get. Again, three obsec war dogs really seems like a very tempting choice indeed. I think the data sheets are fairly well balanced, and you could certainly justify anything from carnivores, stalkers, huntsmen to brigands. Kind of depends if you just want melee monsters to throw into the midfield, or if you more need a squadron of ranged fire support. After the big knight, I think that maybe one of the most tempting picks is probably the Abominant. A lot of the strengths come from its psychic powers, and you can make it incredibly tanky with a 5 plus feel no pain, plus something else from favour of the gods to increase the durability further. Perhaps its damage output can be a bit underwhelming against certain targets with low AP, but this thing's usually going to be a pretty meaty target for the opponent to have to deal with, and certainly put some smack down against infantry. Otherwise, the other abhorrent knights seem decent enough. The Desecrator is quite a popular one, with a decent anti-tank weapon in the one hand, and hitting on twos in melee in the other. The Rampager, I think, is interesting for the same reason as the Gallant, a nice melee missile to throw towards the enemy that isn't all that expensive. The Despoiler gives you more flexibility to take the exact guns that you want to back up the rest of your army. And again, the Questor Magera is interesting enough, Though annoyingly, it will be locked out of the abhorrent upgrades at the moment from the Chaos Knight favours of the gods, because they haven't got round to adding it in with that FAQ. Generally, I think most of the Chaos Knights are pretty usable. I do feel like maybe the Tyrant is one of the less good ones. Still though, if all you need is long-range anti-tank stats, the Castellan Pattern one certainly isn't terrible for that with the Volcano, Lance and Plasma Decimator. For picking Iconoclast and Infernal, it's a bit less of a choice for me. I think that usually the Iconoclast ones are better, unless you want some specific shooting buffs for multiple war dogs. 
far fewer stratagems are locked to either the Iconoclast or Infernal ones, so I'd probably make the choice based on the Fell Bond rather than the Ambition stratagems. I think Frenzied Warriors is really nice, exploding sixes to hit in melee is a nice direct damage boost, hard to go wrong with that. Loping Predators can give you much needed mobility with advance and shoot, that's very nice indeed for any dedicated firing platform. Precision Cruelty could be good for high volume fire knights, maybe brigands with the chain cannons, or wardog moiraxes with lightning locks, that's an extra AP-1 and extra damage if you make wound rolls of 6, and they do also have their own version of plus 1 to hit against vehicles, they also get it against characters, and if you happen to kill one of those targets, then you complete your favour of the gods quest and unlock the higher ability. Again, for this one, if you've got a knight that's got any decent anti-tank weapons on it, it's not a bad pick. I don't think I like the infernal ones quite as much, there's a couple of shooting buffs like reroll ones to hit within 18 inches and ignoring light cover, and one where you can gain light cover outside 18 inches, I guess that could make something like a Castellan Pattern Tyrant rather obnoxious to shift if it's standing at the back. Finally we have Favours of the Gods, which if we went through everything it would just be a full review of the section again, so maybe check out the entire Chaos Knights Codex review that I made. Plenty of them are really usable though, I'd certainly want to pick up one of these on an allied knight, it would just be the question of which one was the most useful. The Carnivores or Rampagers, Blood Shield to ignore Invuls will guarantee that you can kill some elites. Mirror of Fates is a nice generically helpful one to farm some CP. The Pyrothrone can make a knight a Psyker, maybe access that 5 plus feel no pain on a different knight maybe. Beguiling Majesty gives you some serious melee protection, with a minus 1 to hit and wound so you're very unlikely to die there easily. And the Subjugator Machine Spirit can give you advance and shoot, again nice on any dedicated range platform. The last three though are all quite good, and as they give you Chaos Undivided as a keyword, I think they're perhaps some of the top picks. Mark of the Dread Knight can give you the 6 plus feel no pain, Blessing of the Dark Master can allow you to turn off enemy rerolls, and Warpborn Stalker can allow you to deep strike, so you're guaranteed to get the Alpha Strike on the enemy. Getting the Chaos Undivided keyword though means that you can use the Resurrection Stratagem on them, 2 command points for a 4 plus chance for your knight to stand straight back up after it's been killed, and potentially have an entire extra turn of damage dealing, potentially pretty crazily powerful if you manage to pull this off on a really big knight. I think that just makes the last three options, which were already very good, into extra extra tempting ones. Let's finish up just with three build ideas then. First up the Knight Abominum for 460 points. Maybe Winds of the Warp and the Storm Malevolence might be the most tempting psychic ones. The 5 plus feel no pain. And then Storm Malevolent is the one that gives you plus 1 to wound in combat and mortals on 6s. It can turn his sort of medium melee into something that's genuinely threatening. Then he's got the Blessing of the Dark Master favour, the one that stops enemy rerolls and can make him harder to hit as well if you unlock the favoured ability, and of course potentially getting up when he dies. For the Fell Bond, maybe you could have the Exploding Sixes to hit in melee, and between all that you've got an insanely tanky knight that actually hits incredibly hard in melee with the Exploding Sixes, plus one to wound, extra mortal wounds, and potentially for one CP an extra plus one to hit if you're charging. He seems like a pretty reasonable unit to try and force your opponent to have to deal with, while well, maybe the rest of your army plays a bit more cagey and have this guy take the brunt of the punishment and do some heavy lifting at the front. Next up we've got a Knight Rampager, maybe something that could help support a Monster Mash Chaos list with a whole bunch of heavy threats like Greater Demons perhaps. I think I'd be most tempted to take something like the Blood Shield for ignoring Invuls or Beguiling Majesty for the extra melee protection as he's likely to be headed that way anyway. And again that Exploding Sixes in melee fell bond seems like it's pretty reasonable to pick up. Like the Gallant, I'd certainly be on the lookout for two command points to auto-explode him in death, and he's a pretty good target for any damage or defensive stratagems in melee as well. Finally, here's just a couple of ideas for a trio of war dogs. Three carnivores for 450 points hit brutally hard in melee, even without the Iconoclast buff. Again, exploding sixes seems excellent on those, and make them yet more ferocious. I think I'd be most tempted to copy the Knight Rampager, maybe with the Blood Shield or Beguiling Majesty on one of them. I would bear in mind that you can only upgrade one of them with the Favour of the Dark Gods, you can't upgrade both. In any case, they'll be really quite cheap and expendable threats to push forward into the midfield, and dare your opponent to come within their big 14-inch movement, as they hit very hard against just about every target. Otherwise, if you wanted more range support, maybe you could think about a trio of brigands with the Chain Cannons, Thermal Spears and Havoc Launchers, That'd cost you 480 points base, and be a fast-moving, hard-hitting range threat that can deal with a variety of targets. 
36 anti-infantry shots, 6 big anti-tank shots, and a few opportunistic ignores line of sight firepower things for finishing off annoying units clinging to objectives. I think I'd be very tempted by the advance and shoot one for these, as it give you a lot more options in terms of line of sights and getting them where they needed to go, though I guess maybe that one for 6 sister wound getting extra AP and damage could be tempting. That chain cannon would certainly like that quite a lot if you're firing against heavies. If you were to upgrade one of them with the favour of the Dark Gods, maybe something like Mirror of Fates for command point farming, or Warp Born Stalker to have one popping out of nowhere. Again though, the vast majority of the table for that does seem usable. You just have to go for the ranged ones more than the melee ones. So anyway, I think we'll leave that there for our guide to allying knights to your armies. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Could you be tempted to pick up any of these to ally to your Imperial or Chaos forces? I think my guess is that we won't see massive amount of these allied competitively. I don't think that they're really bad as options go, and could fill some nice niches for certain armies, but there's no denying that a knight fielded in a full knight army is just a lot more powerful than one fielded without. You are giving up multiple layers of stacking buffs on them, as I'm not convinced the datasheets are mainly enormously powerful just in themselves. I feel like we'll probably see more of them happening for Chaos Knights than Imperial Knights, as they get more and better access to rules in my opinion, plus have a couple of really strong data sheets like the Abominant and the Carnivores and Brigands, all of which I think are quite nice for the points. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly have a fair few more videos coming out for Imperial and Chaos Knights, and I tend to post new 40k stuff just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description. Making all the content does take a fair amount of time and effort, so if you are enjoying quite a bit, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.